Hi, I'm Warren from the Star Forum. Uh, we decided that it would be a fun idea to, to hold some short video interviews of our colleagues around the business to just get to know each other a bit better. So I'm here with Sean Holcroft today, uh, the new Executive Director, to ask him a few questions. So, good uh, afternoon, Sean. How are you? Yeah, not too bad at all, thanks. Warren. Excellent. So I've got a few questions around the housing industry, your experience and things like that, but then also some more kind of fun things just to, <laughs> just to get to know your personality a bit better. So I'm going to kick off with uh, a kind of easy in one. So how did you get into housing? Um, much like everybody else, I think, who, who finds themselves in housing, it wasn't necessarily a conscious uh, thought. Um, I didn't wake up one morning going, yep, there we go, housing is the future for me. Um, so uh, I grew up in council housing, um, up in Stoke and Trent, um, and I was the first person in my family to go to university. And I think coming out of university, I knew I wanted to do something that helped people, um, and I was very much aware of the difference in the way my life had gone to the way that some of my friends from school's lives had gone. Um, and um, I saw an opportunity in um, a newspaper, I think it was, um, for a graduate trainee programme that a number of housing associations around London and the South East were running. So um, threw my CV in and um, got through to the, um, the assessment day um, and absolutely loved it. Really, you know, really, really enjoyed meeting with the organisations, finding out about what they did, opened up a whole new world that I didn't really know very much about. Um, and I've never really looked back. I absolutely love what we do. Um, I'm very, very lucky. I have a career that um, is never is never much of a trial or a tribulation, um, and it's never too difficult getting up on a Monday morning as a result. So, uh, so yeah, that's how I got into the uh, into the sector. Okay. So what was your first role then? Um, so my first role was as a graduate trainee um, yeah. for um, a housing association called Southern Housing Group, okay. um, who were one of the original philanthropical. Um, housing associations, right. previously known as Samuel Lewis Trust. Um, so I was there for about, in total, I was there for about seven years. Right. Um, started out as a graduate trainee, um, worked as a neighbourhood manager there, um, managed their equivalent of our lean team right. um, okay. um, for a period of time, which was a great role. Um, regional operations manager, head of lettings, mm. and some other bits and bobs yeah. thrown in amongst that as well. Yeah, right. Quite a varied past you've had then in social housing. So. Um, with that background then, what are your first impressions of North Hart's home? Um, so I'd done quite a bit of sort of due diligence okay. on the organisation before arriving. Um, you know, to want to make sure that it was the right fit. But, um, it, you know, I was putting myself forward for an organisation that I could work with and equally that I was putting myself forward for a role that um, I stood the best chance to get. Um, and I think the things I've, I've been um, really surprised by coming in is you know, I was aware of the amount of change that had happened in the organisation in the last 12 mm -hmm. months and I expected to come into an organisation where um, people were um, I guess reeling from that change a little bit mm -hmm. um, and still getting to grips with it and there is some of that but actually the degree of positivity about the future, the sort of the can-do attitude, the sense that people want to do a great job for the customer mm -hmm. has really surprised me mm -hmm. and really positively surprised me. Um, you know, as some people know, particularly as people whose uh, workshops I've managed to take as I've been out and about, I've been out, I have been out quite a bit already mm. to sort of see the service and, and see how it works on the front line. And I, you know, I was out with some guys in our temporary accommodation team yesterday, and you know, the the, the degree to which they care about mm. the service they provide and the amount of uh, or the range of service that they offer to the customer, it really is incredible. And you know, although I've only been here for three weeks. I have to say, I'm really proud of some of what we do. That's good. Well, I'm glad we come across well. <laughs> um, so, obviously, you've come in as a, a executive director, uh, obviously a leadership position. Yeah. So, uh, how, what kind of leadership style do you perceive yourself to have, or do you <laughs> kind of, uh, you know, um, do you aspire to have? And, and also, what do you think makes a good leader? Okay. Um, so, I think in terms of myself. Um, I try and be um, somebody who's quite energetic, um, try and convey the fact that I really enjoy what we do in the way that I go about um, um, conducting myself and leading teams. Um, I try and create an environment where people feel that they've got um, my faith and trust mm -hmm. and that they can go out and make decisions mm -hmm. and that they can 
um, you know, they can raise questions or queries if they don't understand or, that, or if they've got an idea about something they think we could do differently. I, I try as much as possible to create a sense that there's no airs and graces. I don't, you know, I don't really believe in sort of leadership by fear or yeah. you know, sort of having too much weight behind the title. Um, you know, I, I much prefer to convince people of my merit rather mm. than um, let, the, let the job title do the talking. Um, um, and in, in terms of what, what I think makes a great leader, um, yeah, I, I think the primary thing is somebody who inspires trust. Um, you know, I think most people that I've come into contact in life really want to do a good job. Um, it's more often than not the organisation or the people around them who create an environment that means they struggle to do a good job. Um, and I think if people feel safe and trusted in an organisation, then they go on and do their best work. That's great. So as, uh, as far as uh, colleagues, are, you, you, colleagues are concerned, uh, the people working under you, what, what kind of uh, attri attributes do you find uh, most valuable? I think, I think the thing that's most valuable to me is integrity. Mm. Um, and um, I probably missed that after this thing I've just said about myself, but um, you know, it, it works in both, both ways from my perspective. Um, you know, you've, you've got it. The thing that surprises me most in the workplace is that the things that people would do outside of the office, mm. they sometimes seem to suspend when they walk over the threshold into the office. Um, and you know, I, I find myself talking to people and spending a lot of time talking to people about using the, the, the good sense and the common sense that they have outside of mm. work and applying it in work. If you wouldn't treat your family like that, then don't mm. treat your colleagues like that. Mm. That's so cool. Okay, let's go on to some a bit more kind of. Oh, this is where it gets tricky. Yeah, <laughs> a bit more uh, about you as, uh, as a person. Uh, uh. So one of the questions I have is: if you were running a marathon, what charity would you uh, most likely want to raise some money for? <laughs> well, the, the likelihood of me ever running a marathon <laughs> with my knees is limited. But um, yeah, if I if I was. Um, so um, my uh, the male side of my family has a bit of an issue around um, heart disease, yeah. and um, so um, my dad, um, both my parents were quite young, um, and my dad had a heart attack when he was 51, um, and um, fortunately the uh, the team who looked after him at um, North Staffs Hospital um, were um, were incredible and yeah. saved his life. Um, so I think um, any charitable activity that I do or would do. Um, would uh, would go to raising money for them. Interesting. Um, okay, another question now. Going back to your childhood, what was your <laughs> favourite childhood activity? I was trying. I was thinking, if you could be a child again to do something <laughs> that you couldn't really as an adult, what would that what would that thing oh. be that you would go back? Mm. I think. Uh, Early childhood, sort of early childhood, so pre-teens, um, I think, um, I think it, it, it would have to be football. I was football mad as a, as a kid and, and loved it, and hence why I've got such bad knees these days. Um, so, um, you know, endless, endless games of football, breaking the neighbour's greenhouse, those, all those joyous parts of being a kid um, and managing just about to get away with it. Um, uh, I think as a teenager, it would have to be championship manager. I was okay. completely addicted to championship <laughs> manager for most of my teenage years. So there will be groups of our staff who can completely empathise with that illness. Um, and there'll be people going, what the heck are you talking about? Actually, that kind of links into another question I have in a little while. So, but now that you're an adult, what is your favourite leisure activity? kind of pastime, how do you switch off after work? Um, so, um, as, as a few people will know, because I talk about it non-stop, um, I've got a two-year-old daughter, Margot, um, she's two today actually. Yeah, right. oh. um, and Happy birthday, Margot. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, yeah, she's, she's my pastime outside yeah. of work. Um, and, um, you know, I've, I've, I've been pretty career-focused um, for, um, for, for most of my adult life, and, um, I think Margaret coming along was a really nice balance mm. um, and you know, just, just um, yeah, made, made a bit more sense of what's important in the world. So yeah, spending as much time as I can with, with, with her when, uh, when I'm not here is, uh, is my main priority. Yeah, I think most uh, parents with small children will kind of agree with that. You know, you don't have them. It's not that you don't want to have time to do something else, you actually quite enjoy spending time yeah. with, with your children Absolutely. at that age anyway. <laughs> <laughs> 
Okay. Uh, another question we've got is, what CD is in your car right now, provided your car has a CD player? <laughs> <isn't it? laughs> oh, that's a good question. So, um, <laughs> the CD that's in my CD player currently is uh, CBB's The Album. Um, <laughs> so, you can guess that's probably not my, my favourite for months. Um, and, yeah. Um, so, um, outside of that, actually, I'm currently listening to, this is quite boring, but currently listening to the History of England podcast, oh, okay. um, so that's sort of taken up my, my musical time mm-hmm. at the moment. Um, music wise, um, if it wasn't that, it probably would be a band called I Am Clute, uh, mm-hmm. who um, are a, a Manchester Google based that. band, okay. yeah, um, who have a, yeah, their first album is a great album. Oh, okay, I Am Clute, okay. Alright, um, now I'm going to go into a quick fire round. You've got no time to think about this. <laughs> <laughs> Is it yes or no? It's I mean, no. Okay. There's, it's multiple choice, so I'm going to give right, you okay. two options, and you have to, to pick one. Apple or Android? Apple. City break or beach holiday? City break. Cadbury's or Galaxy? Cadbury's. Pasta or potatoes? Pasta. Sega or Nintendo? Sega. Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Start or dessert? Dessert. Motorway or scenic route? Mm. Scenic route. Yes. And finally, box set or movie? Box set. Excellent. Oh, well, that's been quite fun. Thank you very much, Sean, for, for spending this bit of time with me. And, uh, yeah, look forward to getting to know you a lot better over the coming months and years, hopefully. And, uh, yeah, thank you very much for watching, and look out for the next one. Thanks, Warren. Thank you.